Hello, chess friends, and welcome to the Zara of Chess Channel, and welcome to the Computer Rapid Chess Championship in 2022. So the Rapid Chess Championship started uh, an hour ago, and we had already uh, one game so far, and it was already already a beautiful game. It was Tokvich against Koivisto in the Banco Gambit, and the Banco Gambit we haven't covered so much, uh, so many times on my YouTube Chess Channel. It's a sharp opening, uh, one-sided uh, line that uh, Black is using many many times in order to get some kind of a activity, and I think. Uh, uh, recently we have seen many many good defensive games played by Stockwish. We, we are used to of course see the brutal st uh, tactical Stockwish, but I really love uh, sometimes to watch how uh, Stockwish simply defends the position, how Stockwish sometimes uh, sometimes slows down the pace of the game, how Stockwish just uh, searches for uh, simplifications in, ch in chess because these ideas I think uh, we need in order to uh, play better chat so if we go always into tactical battles we could lose of course also many games so that's why i really love uh now again this simplification approach uh here by the fish and i think you also like the game because for human eye it's more understandable than this usual stockfish brutal tactics that stockfish pulls off sometimes not that these games are uh boring of course but uh it's of course uh, sometimes also a refreshment to see stockfish playing in a different way so let's check out now the game as i said stockfish with the white pieces against koi Vista with the black pieces we have the Banco Gambit so d4 here by the fish we have knight to f6 by Coivisto c4 and c5 so we have so far the Benoni and after move d5 now the game transposes into the Banco Gambit and um, usually uh, I when I started to play chess I lost many games uh, because I've ex uh, accepted the Banco Gambit but now recently uh, with also some uh, some of my theoretical improvements at home I'm not scared of the Banco Gambit anymore so most of the times I even tried some ideas of knight to c3, f3, e4. I really searched for uh, these ideas where I will not take out the pawn on b5. But now, uh, when I watch more and more of these games, I'm really not scared. Uh, here, stock which of course took. We have c takes uh, b5, and after a6, now we have now the so called fully accepted Banco Gambit uh, line. And what's the idea? Of course, black takes here after move g6, knight to c3. Black uh, can always recapture the pawn and waits now. Uh, why to play, of course, uh, the move e4. Uh, you could also try to prevent this idea with the move g3 and then bishop to g2 but in my opinion you don't have to do that because it weakens a little bit the pawn structure and even if you push the pawn here on g3 and then we push pawn maybe here on g2 uh, but the bishop on g2 then um, your bishop is not so active on this diagonal because it's blocked out uh, by your own pawn so that's why really really in my opinion the best way is simply this line e4 allow your opponent uh, here to take on f1 it seems like a strange idea in the beginning but actually okay you have lost sort of a tempo but now after move uh, d6 you can play g3 and play king to g2 and secure the king by casting because even if we you could have um uh, put your bishop here on g2 i hope you uh, you agree with me because um, if your push, bishop is here on this diagonal then it would be simply too much paralyzed here so i think it's sort of a good line when we get rid of our bishop the light square bishop is really not the best of piece uh, of, of uh, not the best piece here in white's position so that's why pretty normal stuff so here after move king to g2 we have also castling here by uh Coivisti. of course the stock didn't castle but it sort of was castling by hand and now comes a4 this a4 uh you can use many many times in order to really cement the position on uh the queen side because what you want to get is of course some kind of an idea to Put your knight here on b5 the problem about this idea you could lose maybe some tactical shots on the b file because uh most of the times black is trying now to play something like queen to c7 queen to b6 queen to a5 and then uh maneuver the knight somewhere and then get with this other rook uh into the game let's flip the board a little bit so something like knight to d7 or knight to a6 queen to c7 so placing basically both of these rooks on the b file and on the a file so that's why knight to b5 could be sometimes very risky because of some uh, tactical shots on the b file rook to b5 a takes b5 and something like a rook to a1 could happen but as i said uh here i think um this is a really really instructive game you'll see now the beautiful stockfish approach in in the banco gambit we have now knight to a6 by coivisto knight to f3 of course normal development queen to c8 queen to e2 uh, preparing now a bishop move and then uh this would be the third phase of the opening stage as i always like to say we have three phases of the opening first you should bring out your 
your minor pieces secure the king by castling okay this was not maybe a castling uh, by stockwich but this was castling by hand so that's why the king is secured and now the third stage would be of course maneuver, maneuver the bishop somewhere and connect the rooks so the rooks uh, need to be connected in an opening stage so pretty much a good setup so far by by stockwich so we have now knight to c7 rook to e1 now stockwich is trying uh here as a long-term idea to break through with the move e5 this is a common idea in the uh in the banco gambit but also in of course in the benoni structures still we have sort of a benoni structure uh it's e7 d6 c5 and this is a small pawn chain so whenever you face pawn chains you want to break the pawn chain in the middle of the pawn chain so that's why e5 is really a logical idea so we have now queen to b7 now comes this idea rook to b8 here um the coivisto engine is trying to continue the pressure on the b file and also on the a file so we have now i think now one of the beautiful theoretical novelties that stockfish will uh, that stockfish introduced here in the game bishop to g5 and many times uh, in the banco gambit um, you're trying to do something else you're trying maybe to play rook to a2 and similar stuff then you want to build sort of a slow setup with the move bishop to g5 i think we can agree that the pawn on b2 becomes now a huge huge position problem but stockfish doesn't care stockfish relies simply on this pass pawn on the a file stockfish is now trying to go into a favorable endgame where the distant pass pawn could cause now the distant a pawn here the pawn on a4 could cause now many many positional uh, problems in the endgame here for black so that's why what stockfish is trying to do is really a brilliant idea simply go into an endgame and that's why i liked about this game it's really sort of a human game Game that we see now because simplifying the game is sometimes that we forget in chess games so that's why here bishop to g5 with ideas bishop to f6 then still e5 higher ideas maybe rook to d1 then e5 breaking through in the center trade off many many pieces and go maybe into favorable end game so here h6 and here already sort of a surprise again by fish steer stock which simply takes so bishop to f6 after bishop to f6 it seemed to me in the beginning that it was a risky idea to give up the bishop for a knight in such an open game the game can be really really wild but actually what stockfish try to do here is to weaken the pawn structure on the king side so here first stockfish um, uh, protected the pawn on b2 we have now bishop to g7 if you try for instance something like rook to b8 in order to um, simply continue the pressure around the square b2 there are maybe some threats of bishop to c3 b takes c3 then maybe even queen to b1 rook to b1 then rook to b1 so maybe to get to uh two rooks for the queen but actually this is protectable i think this is a normal idea queen to d3 i really like because it's a preparation to further protect the d5 pawn so you see there is a little bit of a pressure when you push e5 the d5 could be weak now e5 is pretty much working and still even if bishop to c3 happens still you can then recapture with the queen or even with the pawn uh b takes c3 because the queen is connected with the rook here so i like really this setup so as i said i would love to play now in the next couple of the of e5 really breaking through and i think is uh white is much much better so after move rook to b1 here coivisto played bishop to g7 and now a beautiful beautiful idea here by stockfish stockfish is trying now to play h5 if that happens then of course uh here uh, the pawn structure could be weakened in the continuation we have now rook to a6 coivisto is trying to get one of these rooks in front of the queen the problem is always that the queen is in front of uh, this um battery when you place uh, when you uh, create batteries in chess you don't want to have the queen in front of the battery you want to the queen behind maybe a rook behind the bishop and similar stuff so now with the rule move rook to b6 uh Kovisto is continuing the pressure around the square b2 if we try again rook from uh, f to b8 to continue the pressure like this in a common banco gambit way i think h5 is really really beautiful here because you have to pass through if you play g takes h5 then these two weaknesses will be taken in a couple more moves for sure knight to h4 knight to f5 will happen queen to h5 uh, h6 is weak g7 is weak so too many weaknesses in the position if you pass through again i think with ideas of knight to d1 knight to e3 knight to f5 this would be a clear target for for one of this knight so in my opinion again a strategically lost game here for 
uh, for black. So after move h4 here, as we said, rook to a6, we have queen to c2, rook to uh, b6, and now knight to d2, preparing also now the move knight to c4. Here, Koivisto played beautiful move, rook to b4, uh, continues the pressure, also maybe trying uh, here a triple uh, battery on the b file, which is perfectly fine because the b2 pawn is now clear target. And as I said, I really love this game because many of us now, from white's perspective, would feel the pressure, would uh, try. Uh, would start to sweat would uh, ask uh, ourselves the question what should i do here how to defend this uh, the b file is occupied as i said don't forget about your uh, uh, your strengths in the position i think the a pawn the pass pawn on the a file is now huge huge strategic element simply a stockfish play simply on this idea knight to d2 simply gives up now the pawn on b2 rook takes b2 queen takes queen takes bishop takes and now with rook to b1 at least the, the rook comes in in the game with a very 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 important tempo after move bishop to f6 now rook to b7 so you see stockfish is gaining time because of uh, the trades of pieces and now after knight to a6 we have now a beautiful blockade here really really it's sort of a nimtsovich blockade that um that stockfish played here really really a nice uh, cen uh, centralized square here for the knight knight to c4 this knight is controlling the center of the board uh, especially because of the fact that we'll play probably f4 and then e5 in the near future and also it blocks the potential progress of this pass pawn on the c file so now with these two knights it's such a beautiful game just to push the spawn and you see also the rook is much much more active so really really nice nice position play by the fish so here uh, from move knight to c4 we have rook to be eight again uh this coivisto engine is trying to simplify the game in this position it's a good move because you cannot really tolerate this uh, rook on the seventh rank uh, it's uh it's a too strong rook i think in the continuation of the game so that's why rook to b8 perfectly fine so we have rook takes b8 knight to b8 and now f4 as i said with the idea to play e5 so we have bishop to d4 knight to uh knight to a5 also with ideas maybe to place something like knight to c6 you see if uh, this pawn is uh, if um, uh, the knights are traded off on c6 then after d takes c6 c7 you cannot catch up when more with this pawn so that's why here coivisto escaped from this idea but still knight to c6 beautiful move here by the stockfish engine we have king to f8 and now knight to d4 after c takes d4 uh it's now a much much better position because this is an obvious weakness and still this is a distant pass pawn this is now uh, a pawn on the edge of the board Board, which means also that uh, the knight cannot really battle against this uh, against this pawn in an easy way so that's why uh here the distant pass pawn the outside pass pawn is simply too much to handle here for for black so here knight to c1 also uh, trying to attack further the pawn we have now e6 and now after d takes e6 f takes e6 and now a beautiful move here by stockfish knight to d3 again a beautiful blockade idea because what we are not trying to allow here um from from white perspective if black pushes the pawn on e5 uh then of course after something like f takes e5 you see d takes e5 if the knight would not be here uh, if this position would be protected then if this pass pawn would be supported then it's really an uncomfortable game for white so that's why knight d3 controlling the e5 square is now a crucial end game strategy here by the fish so here even if you try something like um, um here h5 was played that uh that was now the last coivistos move but even if you play king to e7 if you try to push uh your king towards uh, the queen side anymore then g4 is going to happen and the problem is now you cannot play ideas like knight to c5 to create maybe this um this trading off ideas and also attack the uh, pawn because you get simply knight to c5 so the knight on d3 is really really important defensive piece even if you try d take c5 the problem is now white can simply push the pawn further with the move a5 you see even if you try c4 the king will co come close a little bit so you cannot promote here even if you try to push the king will catch up with this pawn but the problem is now when black is going after this pawn uh, you just simply push the pawn further and now when the king is too far away from the action you just push f5 and create two pass pawns that are really uh, all over the board so uh, a single king cannot catch uh, catch both of this pawns so it's a completely winning endgame here for for white so really really 
beautiful idea so after move knight to d3 h5 so it doesn't make sense to uh, include the king into the game uh, in an early stage of the game so in the early stage of this end game uh, that's played now by these two top engines so as i said h5 is logical because you're preventing g4 which would be very very unpleasant here for black so after move the king to f3 was played we have king to e8 a5 pushing the pawn further and now we have king to e7 um, in, even if you try something like king to d7 immediately maybe to go closer uh, to the queen side then f5 is again really a beautiful move because after e takes f5 you could maybe try here uh here e takes f5 but even if you connect everything here then just uh, g4 is again simply winning because we'll, we would create again a new pass point here on the h file also one pass point on the a file so again it's game over so um obviously this is not a, a good anymore a good end game here for for black anymore after move a5 king to e some was played now comes e5 here by stockfish and now d5 passing through we have king to e2 but now after move e5 the d4 pawn becomes more and more of a weakness we have now king to e8 now knight to c3 c1 uh, preparing knight to b3 and then also to attack d4 so here king to d8 now comes knight to b3 d3 king takes d3 we have king to d7 knight to d4 controlling also the e6 and now uh knight to c5 a check king to e3 not a problem even if you try something like king knight to e4 still uh, this pawn can be protected so really really nice end game play especially with the king you see stockfish is controlling the center of the board so <laughs> every move king to e3 we have king to c8 now comes king to f3 and now knight to knight to b7 here coivisto leaves the protection of um, the e6 pawn but even if you try something else even if you try king to d7 then g4 is again the winning move because um, if you play knight to a6 you don't want to take of course uh invite your opponent's king into the game even if you try something else even if you try knight to a6 to do sort of perpetual still you can take uh, g takes h5 after g takes h5 now f5 uh, after e takes f5 now you play just king to f4 and you see the knight is controlling this very very important squares uh for the king so the king cannot come on the other side of the board we'll take out this pawn take out also then afterwards this pawn and again we would have this two this outside pass pawns in the end game stage which is obviously winning here for for white so after move king to f3 we have knight to b7 as i said and finally uh stock which takes out this pawn okay coivisto takes out this pawn but now all of these pawns are weak we have uh, g4 again uh, knight to c6 and here the g takes h5 g takes h5 knight to g7 attacking also the h5 we have again a new check another problem and here from knight to h5 it's complete winning uh of course here for the stockfish engine again three pawns uh they cannot be stopped just only with the king and, and the knight so here we have king to d7 knight to g7 very very cool move here by the stockfish engine again not allowing uh the king to come closer in this position we have now knight to b4 h5 we have knight to c2 creating a check not a problem uh here stop which escapes push simply the pawn further we have knight to f3 and okay here coivisto found a way at least how to control uh this a a8 uh, hx square but still it's of course not a problem because stockfish kicks away the knight and now the knight is cornered here and will stay there forever so we have now uh we have now f6 we have now d4 king to d4 king to c6 and now after e6 knight to g6 again a beautiful move e7 so there's nothing that can be done uh you cannot protect everything we have here a promotion stockfish promotes a new queen takes and here uh, after queen to b8 it was a beautiful beautiful checkmate so really really interesting stuff um, let's go back uh, to this really theoretical novelty sort of uh, where uh, after king to g2 here stockfish uh, continue with this very very unpleasant bishop to uh, g5 so uh, uh, after h6 many of us i think would search again new activities for the bishop would try to stay with the bishop but here stockfish got rid of the bishop took and after uh, bishop to f6 rook to b1 attacked simply further the position uh, queen to c2 you see then also decided 
uh, after a couple of moves to go into a favorable endgame where, of course, the distant pass pawn caused many, many positional problems for black. So, as I said, this is one of uh, many beautiful approaches that you can use in order to beat the Banco Gambit. I really like it because uh, you can use many of these elements uh, in your own games. Uh, I'll try it out, especially because my brother and my brother-in-law, Antonio, are playing many times the Banco Gambit. So, I'll try now this stoppish approach. Just don't tell them because uh, probably they'll find out something else to beat me. But okay, as I said, the Banco Gambit can be played, but be careful. You see, there are positions, but also tactical ideas for both sides. So, it's still an unexplored area when it comes to human chess, I think. So, okay, I hope uh, that you enjoyed the game. I really enjoyed it a lot. If you want to see more brutal and positional brilliances like this, check out my comment to chess games play by computer series with some more games play by stockfish alpha zero lila zero and many many more and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and what to say chess is the best of course